there's a video, a news video up there of the owner of the house picking up parts of his car around the cross. So that was a trial in our life. And the Bible says we'll go through many trials in our life. All of us are going to lose loved ones eventually, friends eventually. It's going to happen, it's going right? To happen. So who better to have in your corner but God, God himself um, when you go through, any, to go through something, right? I think that's a sign. Huh? Do I think it's a sign? I'll ne and I won't be able to know that until I meet my, uh, my creator. Um, maybe he'll share that with me one day. Do I, do I feel um, well? God's involved in everything that we're doing. He's involved in the conversation that we're having right now. Exactly. Uh, we came together, I believe, for a reason for today. A reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's maybe why just, I'm asking you. Don't yeah, you think yeah, that's the yeah. Sure, sure. And uh, but do I? The more important question is: is do I think my son believed and, and asked Jesus Christ in his life before he died? We we believe that. But we're his earthly parents. Only his heavenly Father knows whether he truly trusted and believed in it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we, we hope and pray we'll see him someday in heaven. Oh, and most um, definitely. but uh, that occurrence happened. And again, I'm sorry. To yeah. Hear. The next thing that occurred, I want to tell you a couple of things that happened. My 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 son was an organ donor. He donated his body to LifeShare. Mm. And you said you're involved in the medical field, so you probably have heard of LifeShare before. Mm -hmm. And he donates kind of what you put on the donor cards and your driver's license and stuff. That's where you go. So he donated his body, and we got a letter months after the accident from a 18-year-old uh, boy. He was a uh, baseball pitcher at Matter Day High School up north. Okay. And uh, thanking us for the donation, he got a uh, ligament from my son's arm, and he was a, he had Tommy John surgery, and he had a replacement. He had part of my son's ligament there in his arm. He thanked us for it in a real nice letter. And at the bottom of the letter, he left his phone number. Uh -huh. And he said, please call me. So my wife got in her cell phone. And left Last <laughs> week! <laughs> and uh, he left his cell phone. My wife got on her cell phone and called him and got a voicemail. Okay. Left him a voicemail and said, please call us back. But we waited months and months and months and we didn't get a phone call back. We thought, ah, oh, maybe he's just not going to call us back, whatever. So, anyway, my wife and I are foster youth mentors. And we've been mentors for many years. We take kids from the county out, and we'll take them out camping and bike riding and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but one day, we were on the 94 West Freeway. We live in a mall. We were driving our mentee to uh, uh, Coronado on a bike ride. So we're driving on this freeway. We're right in front of this house. This house right this here? This house right here on the freeway. My wife's cell phone rings. Who do you think is calling us for the very first time and talking to us vocally? Well, the donor. Yes. He calls us up. We're all just staring and at each other. still right believe. in front of this house. <laughs> right in front of this house. That's the warning. That's a, that's no, a sign. That's yeah, not a warning, yeah, but a sign. Yeah. So we talked to him and we said, you know what? Can we have dinner with you? So we did. We had dinner with him and his mom up at the uh, Claim Jeffer restaurant in Carlsbad. We uh, had dinner and we're sitting there talking to him. And um, the boy asked to start asking us questions. And he said, uh, what, what type of car did Devin drive when he, got, he had his accident? Mm -hmm. We told him it was an Acura Integra and the model and everything. And he looks at us funny and he goes, I drive that same car. So then we started talking to his mom a little bit. And we find out she's a Casa, who is kind of a, like a mentor. They take kids out from the county and they go shopping with them and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Then we find out his... his uh, father is a child abuse judge. So we start putting all this stuff together and we go, oh, that's it's a little different. Um, so me and my wife, uh, we've been talking about adopting a boy for many years. Uh, we, My son was all on board with it because he'd taken kids out in the county and taught him how to ride bikes and everything. He liked the idea. We just never got around to it while he was alive. Well, after he died, we got serious about it. We contacted a lady in our church. We were going to the Rock Church at the time. And we contacted a lady by the name of uh, Lisa Walker, who heads the uh, foster youth ministry in, in uh, the Rock Church. Okay. We didn't really know her, but we knew of her. So we called her up, contacted her. My wife asked her if she knew anything. Mm -hmm. And she said she did, but she, could she call her back? Mm -hmm. And so, so my wife gave her her cell phone number, and, and we waited for a call back from her. We waited for months and months and months. No phone call back from her. The last place we saw my son alive, we had uh, at the Olive Garden restaurant in Growth Bond Center. We had dinner there many times as a family. Okay. 
After his accident, we were reluctant to go back to that restaurant because of the memories. But one night, we said, you know what, let's just go back. We went to the restaurant, had dinner, we walked out of the restaurant, and almost the exact spot we said goodbye to my son for the last time, mm -hmm. my wife's cell phone rings. Who do you think is calling us? Lisa Walker. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I'm sorry I didn't call you back sooner. I was in a missions trip in Jamaica. So she tells us how to, about the adoption process, who to contact, and websites, and that kind of thing. So we said, okay, God, let's continue down this road. We did, and we ended up uh, adopting a boy. And actually, 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 he's here today playing over here in uh, the park here. Okay. He moved into our house on May the 28th. Come time to meet him for the very first time. We adopted him through the county. And uh, we were given an address of where he was. We didn't know where this place was. There's lots of foster homes all over the county. And we just give it an address. So my wife has a GPS voice activated cell phone. So she puts the address in her phone and it starts talking out loud and giving us directions. So we go right, we go left, we go right, we go left. And uh, my, my son was headed for Mesa College when he died. We start noticing we're getting close to Mesa College. And we go, why are we getting close to Mesa College? We get closer to Mesa College. We're at the front gate of Mesa College, and my wife's cell phone says, turn left. The place where this boy used to live borders Mesa College. So, you know, God's real again, and he sees the, phone, the conversation that we're all having right now, and he wants you in heaven. And you, you sound like you're a believer, and uh, he wants us to tell others about it as well. And I know um, we're using this way of going out and sharing the gospel with people, but you know the best way to do it is to to do it with people you know mm -hmm. and who trust you. Mm -hmm. It's just you know a lot of people are reluctant to do it because they think you know my friend's going to say this or that, and I'm you know, going to make them feel uncomfortable or whatever. But what we, what we tell people is this: let's picture your your best friend that's unsaved, and you know they're unsaved, and maybe you've had touched on it here and they said they. They tell you, ah, I don't want to talk about that. Let's say today they got in a car accident, just you here fishing, and they died. And uh, you, you were hesitant over the years of saying anything to them about Jesus. So if you knew they were, they died in their sins, where are they going? And they sinned? In their sins. They didn't ask Jesus Christ in their life. Where are they going? They're going to hell. Yeah, and that should be... That's what kind of motivates us, you know, mm -hmm. is to get out there and, 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 and if we say we really do believe in heaven and hell, why aren't, why aren't we saying something? Why are we keeping it to ourselves? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just kind of leave you with that. Um, just something to ponder. Okay. And there's different ways. This is just one way of doing it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But we got a lot of different examples up on our website. I do it with a friend. Um, and he has a lot of different things he does, too, up there, too. So a lot of different examples for you to watch and look at. And maybe you can even go give on our website and say, you know what, I was down at fishing one day, and this guy approached, this couple approached me, and they were talking to me about stuff. Go check out our video. Yeah, it's a way to share the gospel, right? You can get the gospel with them, and you're involved in it. And, uh, but anyway, you got any questions for me? No. No, no. Well, I thank you for your time, and... Good fishing. There's a lot of fishing stories in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice.